Today what I'd like to do is share with you some of the suggestions people had made after I made the How to Identify an Unknown Transformer video. And there were at least three, if not more, fabulous suggestions. Now, one thing I would point out is that while you might be waiting for the second in my series of How to Rejuvenate Battery videos, well, the reason you're not seeing that video right now is because, well, the weather outside is quite cool and miserable. It's been a very light spring up here, and I'm waiting for the weather to be a bit better. So hopefully next week we'll have that video. But for now, let's look at some of these viewer suggestions. And the first one is from Robert, who's in the UK, and he actually has his own channel, the My Project Box channel. And what I'll do is put a link up because he has some very nice stuff there. But anyway, what he had suggested was if you want to identify the primary of a transformer, take a incandescent light bulb like that one and put it in series with the AC power and put it across the terminals of the transformer. And well, for the primary, the light bulb will hopefully not light up. And for the secondary, which will be subjected to a way higher voltage than it normally would be, well, the light will light up, showing us that the secondary is in saturation. And at the same time, the light bulb will be protecting the secondary from a excessive amount of current. So we should do that. And to that end, I have my dim bulb tester, which is really just a light bulb in series with an electrical outlet. And I should note that when I'm doing all of this, well, I have the thing plugged into a GFCI, a ground fault circuit interrupter or a residual current device, depending on the part of the world you're in, to protect myself. And even at that, I have it turned off before I try and attach it to the terminals of the transformer. And here we go. I'm going to attach it to the primary first. And I have a 40 watt light bulb in here. And I'm going to turn it on and absolutely nothing. So that would indicate that that is most likely the primary or some other high voltage winding. Certainly a winding that is at least wound for 120 volts. If you were in Europe, of course, it would be 240 volts. Now what we'll do is attach it to the secondary. I'm going to use the 12 volt secondary because it's a center tapped winding. So we'll just go end to end if I can get my clips to attach. There we go. And I'm going to turn it on. And if Robert is right, the light should light up. And it did. So there you go. A, a really easy way to determine which of the windings is the secondary or at least a low voltage winding and which has a voltage of at least as high as your normal line voltage. Now I should point out a couple of things when we're doing that. One of which is when we're powering the secondary windings over here, what that's going to mean is we're going to end up with the full voltage or a bit in excess of that across the secondary. So we will end up with a full primary voltage across the primary winding. So in my case, a little over 120 volts. And that means you have to be really careful not to touch the other winding or other windings while you're testing one of them, because you could certainly get zapped. And because these windings are isolated, no GFCI device is going to protect you. So that's the first easy way of determining at least which are high and low voltage windings. I should, in fact, point out one other thing, and that is if you have a big giant transformer, its magnetization current may be high enough to light up a light bulb like this. You might need a bigger light bulb to pass a bit more current to make sure it doesn't light at the normal line voltage. And, you know, just to give you an example, I have a kilowatt transformer, a kilovolt amp transformer, that I use for various things, including stepping up to 240 volts in the lab. And well, its normal magnetization current is in the order of one amp or so. So it would certainly 
light up this light bulb. So you have to be a little bit careful there and try and match the light bulb to perhaps something around the size that you expect the transformer to be or one tenth of the size. So, you know, if you have a kilowatt size transformer, you probably need a light bulb that's at least 100 watts, if not 200 watts, so that it'll pass enough current without lighting up from the magnetization current when it's attached to the, the normal high voltage primary of the transformer. But there you go. That's the first method. The next method comes from Tyler, and he's actually in northern Ontario. So not too far from me, at least for Canadian standards. He's probably two or three hours away. Not far. And he had a thought, and it's actually a really good one, and that was he noticed on the, the transformer video that I was having a hard time measuring the low impedance or the low resistance, I should say, of the secondary windings in particular. And he said what he always wanted to try was use something like a power supply, a DC power supply, to pass a large current or low voltage through a transformer winding and use the voltage and the current to figure out what their resistance is. So we're going to do that right now. I'll move this out of the way. Here's my power supply. I'm going to turn it on. Hopefully it won't make too much of a buzz for the microphone to pick up. And by the way, I'm testing a new recording setup here. This is normally the desk I use for Zoom phone call type things, Zoom video chats, and I've got a microphone hanging up in the air, so we'll see how that comes out. It'll also be interesting to see how the webcam does in terms of video quality. Anyway, here's my transformer. Here's the power supply, and what I'm going to do is attach the power supply to First of all, the primary of the transformer, and I'm going to fiddle around with the voltage. And the key thing to do is to make sure you're not passing much more than the rated current of the transformer. Now, you don't know what the rated current is until you've figured out what it is. But, you know, we can look at this and say it's a tiny transformer, so... Maybe it's 10 watts, maybe it's 20 watts, something like that. So the primary should certainly, if it was a 120 volt primary, probably not have much more than a tenth of an amp. So I'm going to pass about a tenth of an amp through it. And with this power supply, the neat thing is I can see both current and voltage. So what I'm going to do is put about 9.3 volts across the primary of the transformer, 9.3 volts DC. And surprise, surprise, that's one tenth of an amp. And the reason I did that, of course, was to make the calculation easy. So we can figure out what the resistance of the primary is, which is 9.3 volts divided by 0.1 amps or 93 ohms. Okay, now we'll repeat the same thing for the what we expect to be a 12 volt secondary. Better turn the voltage down quite a bit on my power supply. And it turns out, if I make the voltage on the power supply somewhere around 1.4 volts, I get somewhere around 1 amp flowing through the unknown, the quote unknown secondary of this transformer. Well, 1.4 volts divided by 1 amp gives us 1.4 ohms. So we now know that this secondary winding is 1.4 ohms. Now, that doesn't, in theory, tell us much other than certainly the one winding with the higher resistance is most likely a higher voltage winding. But we can make a bit of an assumption, namely, that somebody winding a transformer like this would tend to make this winding carry pretty much the same amount of power as the secondary winding, at least across the higher voltage terminals on it. And what that would tend to mean is if they wanted to have the losses in the coil pretty much the same for the secondary and for the primary, 
Well, we would expect that given that the voltages and the currents change from one end to the other by the turns ratio of the transformer or the voltage ratio, same thing. Well, that would probably mean that the resistance of the actual wires would be would also have a ratio. Well, it does have a ratio, namely 93 ohms to 1.4 ohms. But if we sort of consider one having 10 times the voltage or so and one tenth of the current and the other, the converse, well, what that means is the ratio of the resistances, if we were to take the square root of that, that should probably give us about the ratio of the voltages. So let's do that. We have 93 ohms and we'll divide that by 1.4 ohms, the ratio of the two windings, and we'll take the square root of that, which is 8.15. And if we take 120 volts, the normal primary voltage, and we divide it by 8.15, what do we get? Well, we get 14.7 volts. And the output of this is supposed to be 12.6 volts, but when we actually used it a few videos back, we did discover that it was somewhat higher than that. So a 14.7 volt estimate is actually a good one. So it turns out that we can make not a bad estimate of the voltage ratios of a transformer by taking the square root of the resistance of the windings. Now, that is, again, working on the assumption that the designer of the transformer decided to make the losses in the primary and secondary windings about the same. They may not have done that, but it's not a bad starting point if you have no idea what the transformer might be. Now, the final suggestion, and that was a very interesting one to me, came from Dennis, and I'm not sure where Dennis is, but what he said was use an induction meter and so i looked and i bought one and the really neat thing is it turns out they're not expensive at all this little meter here cost me about 25 bucks or so it was one of the cheapest of the cheap but what i was looking for was one that did inductances well into the henry's range some of the really cheaper ones only go into the milli henry's and well, it turns out you do need things into the Henry's range. And so what we're going to do is we're going to measure the primary winding with this meter and also the secondary and, well, use that to figure out the turns ratio and the voltage ratio. So I have this thing set up and I think you can see it nicely on the screen. And if I hold it across the thing, there we go. 1.6 Henry's across the primary winding and now we'll go across the 12.6 volt secondary winding what do we get about 22 milli Henry's or 0 0.022 Henry's and if we take 1.6 and divide it by 0 0.022 and then we take the square root because it turns out it's the square root of the inductances that gives us the voltage ratio or the turns ratio, we get 8.53. And to test if that makes any sense, well, if we take 120 volts and divide it by 8.53, what do we get? We get 14 volts. And so it turns out that that's not a bad estimate of the secondary voltage either. So there you have it, three more really neat ways of figuring out what the characteristics of a transformer are, of an unknown transformer. I should point out that one thing I did discover with this meter is if you put a resistor in parallel with one of the windings, the meter gets all messed up. So it's clearly a very simple meter. What that also tells me is if you had a winding that, say, had very many turns because it was something like a very high voltage winding, well, what you might find is that the resistance of the wire in the winding tends to somewhat 
mess up the measurement of a simple meter like this. I don't know if that's a factor or not, but it's something to watch for. But anyway, there you go. I hope you found that useful as always. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing. It always helps a small channel like this one. And if you have questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have suggestions for a upcoming video, send me an email. And, well, I hope that was useful. See you next time. And thanks for watching.